Today I played against my best college opponent, probably ever. I faced Jacob Fernley, ATP number 274, who recently just won a 125 challenger in the UK. But let's take a step back. We faced our toughest match by far today, TCU. Since I've been in college, TCU has been ranked anywhere from number 1 to number 5, and has consistently been one of the best teams in D1 tennis. They produce players like Cam Nori, and they end actually ended up winning the NCAA championship this year, that showed you just how good they were. As usual, doubles was first. And even at three doubles, we played two great players. Pedro Vives, who's 515 ATP, and Jack Pennington Jones, who's 636 ATP. It's indeed a tough challenge and a higher level than the last matches. And we don't start off too well as we get broken in the third game after I miss this volley. A double fall the next game puts us back at 2-2, so we're back in it. One of the best points here, 15 all. A good serve to start things off, but eventually they both reach the net. I tend to stay more back in these rallies because I like to hit ground strokes and kind of break them down as opposed to playing volley to volley. After a couple of volley exchanges, they miss this last one, putting us up in the game. We faced two break points though in the same game and this time they cut out on top of it. Despite our best efforts, they hold the next game and we once again face two break points at 4-2 down. They love my partner and I run around it and try to be aggressive and hit in the net. On the first match when I missed the return off his first serve and gave them set 6-2. We eventually also ended up losing a doubles point as a team, so we were down 1-0, but we were looking to turn things around in singles. In singles I was moved back to court 2 after playing my last match at 3, and as I said in the intro, today I will be playing my toughest opponent yet, Jacob Fernley. He's a British player ranked 274 in the world, who recently just won the Nottingham 125 challenger on grass, defeating some top 100 players along the way. So pretty impressive. Among other things, he was also ranked number 6 in the IT college rankings and his UTR was 14.29, the second highest in college tennis overall. So definitely a tough match was waiting, but also a great chance to measure myself against a player of such caliber that it doesn't really happen every day. Now one thing that was clear from the start is he was serving at maybe max 50%. As you can see he was probably injured either in his abs or back I'd say, not sure which. So for sure he had that against him, which made it much easier for me to play return games. Still though, it's not like I really hit winners off those serves anyway, but I also wasn't under some pressure. And I also had a fair share of issues hitting normal back in the past weeks, that's why I've been slicing a lot, so we both had some parts of our game missing, let's say. I get an early break though, as I think my energy and pace was a bit better at the start of the match. His stronger shot was definitely as foreign, as he could do the most damage with it and move me around more. His backhand was also solid though, so it's not like I could just play to that side and wait for him to miss. I try to keep him moving here as much as possible and speed things up with the foreign when I get a good chance. I'm forced to hit this last minute slice here as I thought this ball was going to land out, and then he hits hard inside out. I'm up 40-30 and I serve big wide to go inside in, but then just missed by a little bit. Deuce point then, and since I broke him already, I definitely want to lose that this early and lose confidence. The level of play and attention in each shot by both was rising. And I'll let you watch this point as well some proper tennis. Big hole to go up 3-0. At this stage of the match, I was still slicing quite a bit, but I didn't want to fall into the trap of just being comfortable into that corner without being aggressive, as I knew that points like these were not what I should be doing. Forty third in his serve, and he goes line straight away with the back end, something that I think I haven't done in the last three months. I try to push him back with his foreign, but I miss it long, giving him his first game. On serve, I really wanted to keep dictating, as I saw he was starting to be more aggressive in the rallies when he had the chance. This point was a perfect start. I get up 40-15, and I honestly didn't know before the match started that his backhand was great. He was repeatedly putting pressure on me and getting chances to come forward just with that shot, which was pretty surprising to me. At 40-30, he returns short though, and I waste no time to come forward. Thankfully, he misses the pass just long. At this point I'm feeling good, hitting the ball clean, and my focus is still very high. 
going cross followed by down the line and then back and volley to seal it. I knew that obviously I wasn't going to be easy though and that not every point I could execute like that. Here for instance he flashed me with a huge forehand cross. He's up 40-15 and we get into a longer rally, I'll let you watch. He ends up holding though, so I find myself 4-2 on serve. I think despite my wrist issues causing me to slice quite a lot, I was overall playing some of the best tennis in the last months. Serve was on point and I was getting good power and depth on most shots. And I'm not rushing when he's ahead in the point. I play a deep topspin back in here and then, needless to say, inside in winner. I get up 40-15 and as usual I throw a big serve down the tee, which I really like because it almost ensures a forehand from the middle next. I like that better than slice wide and forehand to the open core because typically the return from a wide serve comes a bit lower and it's more difficult for me to control that ball and hitting it with pace. Anyway, hands up on top of another banger cross court winner. 40-30 then and I definitely don't want to get to deuce and give him the chance to come back. I know he's obviously not serving at full pace but he's still playing great from the back and could hold with no issue I think. He misses the forehand and I go up 5-2. He's up 40-15 in the next game and I guess he's tired of my slices that slow down the point so he decides to break me down on my forehand side. First game where I can serve out the set. And after this backhand cross he comes to the net which he hasn't really done until now. He also hits quite a good overhead for somebody who's injured. 15-30 and second serve here. It could get tricky. You know lose his game, lose some confidence. Things could change very quickly. I'm moving him around seeing if he shows some weakness on either side, waiting for my chance to finish forward. Eventually I slow things down with a couple slices here, to see if maybe he lifts one up, or lands one short, as he's pretty good at holding my pace. He decides to move me out to the back end corner and then puts me back with his foreign line, but he wasn't expecting this missile, just listen to the sound of this. Huge point! Fall dive, double fault. 30-40, <laughs> facing two breakpoints. Yeah, just too good from him there, honestly. Still have this game to sneak a break though, potentially. So I have to play all out. I hit this Nestor luckily, or unluckily, I still don't know. And then lob in to take the first point home. A body serve and I'm trying to hit big to a big target. That's what really what I've been doing most returns today. A couple of foreign exchanges and I hit the nest trap again. And this ball's definitely out, but he plays it and misses the foreign. That's definitely a steal there. At lot 30, he double faults, so it's looking good. He wins the next point, but at 15-40 I push him out wide with this return, and he misses the forehand cross. That's usually winner there, but this time it's wide, so I take the first set 6-4. The second set I start off with the right intensity, and I find myself 40 love up. I try to keep him back with a series of slice back and cross court, and I'm honestly just hoping he goes line so I get the forehand cross. But eventually, I'm the one who decides to switch line. And after moving him back to the backhand corner, he misses the slice long. He plays three very good points at the start of his service game, and I knew I could probably do more of the returns if I can get it deep like I do here with pace. This really sets me up to close the point in the next few shots, like I do here. I get one step closer to Deuce, and he serves well for his standard, and then fits his sneaky down the line which I didn't read and honestly didn't think was going in. One all then, big serve to the body but my approach is just not good enough and he passes me with ease. I switch it up at 15 all and serve wide, looking to, you know, just not run the same plays over and over. And I'm putting pressure on him with the foreign, but he defends well with this deep ball cross. I shank by myself and he attacks it. My passing shot just stops at the top of the net. 15-30. Not good enough on my shots and he hits a back in line winner. I'm in trouble now and second serve to start a point makes things worse. I'm immediately on the run and have to hit a two-handed back in here for this passing shot. He makes the first ball in the stretch, but luckily not the second one. We're now at deuce point, critical moment. I've played with a good enough pace, but as you can see, my shots just have not been deep enough.
and that allowed him to use my pace and put more pressure on me until eventually I can't take it anymore. The next game I'm about plus 30 though, so things are not over yet. Inside and winner. One point each and we're 15-40 now. This is a massive to get back in the set. This time the inside in lands just out, so we're back on serve. I could just feel some pressure building though at this point. Most of my forehands were not landing as deep as in the first set and he was great at using my pace to dictate. He was starting to be more aggressive and making me run side to side. Nonetheless, I'm 40-15 up here. But once again, that backhand line, and I don't know, it was just really hard for me to read it and I don't know where he was going with it to be honest. Still get a hold though, and they were precious as the match went on because this level was rising and I knew it would be hard to break him. You know, when he's that aggressive right after the serve, it's tough to really have a chance. At this point, there's another factor starting to creep in. Time. Just like last match, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to finish my match or not. And so I started to rush, as you can see here with this foreign. It would be a real shame not to finish, so I knew I had to take this set, quick. But again, my foreign doesn't come out of my strings and he takes advantage of it. So lot 30, and this time I try to be more sensible and not rush, but I end up being too cautious and he passes me. 15-40 now. At this point, it's better in terms of my depth, but he's also not playing short and giving me a hard time, which contributed to my struggle. And then whenever he hit the inside end, it really put me in trouble, he was basically setting up the points like I would. As you can see, we're now down 2-0, so there wasn't much time left, so I went full aggressive mode and hit a great winner here. We make it to 30 all, and man, I wish sometimes on some of these balls I could just go back and down the line. It would solve so many issues, but my wrist just doesn't allow it at this pace, unfortunately. 40-30 now, and I need to take this point for a vital breakpoint opportunity. This point ends with a back and winner that not me or him thought was going in, but I'll take it. Deuce, and nothing better than hitting a complete 4 inch shank on a 50 mile an hour serve to completely waste it. Nice. And meanwhile we lost another match, we're 3-0 down and that does not make things easier here. Once again a rushed 4 and miss. 15 on, honestly I said forget my wrist now as I go with my full pace down the line back end. 40-15 and he misses the return, so we're at least we're 5-4 now. Fifteen love. Good deep return here as he lifts one up. This could be a good chance, but like an idiot I attacked his foreign and the outcome is inevitable. Law 30 and he serves T and the slice is kinda short. I'm really on the run after this inside out, but I put a lob up which I'm praying goes in. And it does, so we're back in. I go full swing foreign and he misses. The under arm serves me in 15-30 and instead of taking advantage of it I hit a terrible drop shot. And then missed the pass which honestly I think was makeable. Yeah, clearly some of the choices I made in the last couple games I think were not great. I was a bit in my head due to time issue, but you know, nonetheless, I just didn't want to give the set away. Um, but yeah, I don't do enough, so he hits the winner and he seals the set. And just like that, predictably, the match got abandoned, and I was quite cross at that. The final score then was 6 4 4 6. Honestly, pretty upset, did not get to finish that one. Regardless of the outcome, it could have been one of my best performances and I really wanted to play the third set. I think if I didn't try to rush the second set though and I played as if there was a lot of time, we would probably still be unfinished and maybe like 5 all or something. I kinda knew that my only shot possibly was to speed things up and hoping that I would win points while keeping the rally short, but yeah, it didn't work out unfortunately. Overall though, happy with the level considering that he's probably playing Wimbledon this year. And obviously he couldn't serve very well, but from the back he was probably at an advantage actually, as he could hit all sorts of back. So yeah, tough team loss, but personally have been growing in terms of my level. And you know, there's still a lot of season left, so hopefully I can win some more great matches.